My name is Jared Thorpe. I'm the co-founder of the Office for Creative Research. Um, I'm a data artist and our studio explores the boundaries between data and culture. So I've been uh, working with data for more than a decade, uh, first as a data visualization artist and now um, running a studio where we think a lot about how data is being used, what impact is it having on uh, individuals and communities, and how can we build tools as well as things like performances and sculptures to help people understand their um, relationship with data. One of the, the big things that I've come to realize about this whole data system is that the one player in that whole system that can't see anything is, you know, we, uh, here we call it the user or the consumer. I like to call them people. Uh, think about them as like uh, sons and daughters and fathers and mothers. The, they're the people that don't really have any voice. And a part of that reason is because they, 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 they're in the dark. And so I would say the primary thing that we try to do with tools like Floodwatch and a lot of our other work is just to give people a kind of voice in this conversation. Uh, I mean, here, here's the biggest challenge is that almost all of the data is in private hands. So almost all of this data lives within corporations and governments. And so how do we, how do we encourage those, those entities to, to, to um, volunteer to be transparent without there being a good business case for it? I think that's one of the problems is that um, right now, unless there's a sort of way to make more money, uh, it's not it's not typically to hear to hear companies go okay we're going to do that, um, and so I think what we're what we're hearing right now is we're hearing a good conversation around the ethical reasons to do these ra these things rather than the financial ones. But also, I, I would make the argument um, the consumers are getting you know they're get, they're they're really getting wise to all of this these things. Well, I think it's it's really valuable. We need we need fora like this where people can come together and talk. Um, we need organizations that can fund work that maybe wouldn't otherwise get funded. And, and I think one of the interesting things about DTL is that it's bringing people in from not only different industries, but different parts of the world. Um, I've been really excited to talk to people about this um, issue in Europe where, where our th thinking about privacy is much different than it is in North America. And to understand that if we're going to do this, it needs to be, uh, we need to find solutions that will work not just in Europe or not just in North America, but kind of all around the world. Future, in despite, despite my um, concern about what's happening right now, I think I have a little bit of a utopian feeling here, and that, that utopian feeling is that um, individuals will learn how to, how to gain some power in the data conversation, and through that, um, we'll live in a world where, where um, decisions aren't just being made by the data elite and are, are instead being actually made by communities. And that's, that's like what most of our society is built upon is that decisions should be made by the public. Um, and, and, and maybe that can happen again. It's not happening right now, but maybe it can happen.